five minutes late calling you. I went a little uh, long with my previous guests. We had some really nice historical discussion and all that. But uh, are you ready to go here for the last 10 minutes? And I don't know if I can keep you over, but uh, yeah, you ready to talk a little bit about the ratings and if Wofford might be able to make an at-large bid and all that good junk? Okay. Okay. We'll be we'll be uh, uh, brief there. The, the, beside the two questions I want to ask is just the impact of the Wofford victory, and also maybe even a little uh, SoCon versus Sun Belt because there's a game tonight in Johnson City with uh, ETSU and Georgia Southern, and uh, I, I find it interesting because Georgia Southern used to be a SoCon team, and you know what direction should uh, a local ETSU take? So there we go. Anyway, let's get right to the okay. point here. Okay. Hey, it's Tri-City Sports Now, and I've got a big-name guest, Ken Pomeroy of KenPom.com. College basketball fans all over the country know Ken Pomeroy with his famous ratings, and uh, nobody, I think, knows all 351 D1 teams from 1 to 351 better than Ken Pomeroy. So thank you for joining me here on Tri-City Sports Now. And uh, I was very excited about Wofford's victory against North Carolina. I have always been a fan of Southern Conference basketball, and I lived for the day in which I could see the SoCon getting an at-large berth. So let me ask you, let's just say Wofford wins the regular season title, good chances any now after that victory against North Carolina, and uh, but they fall in the conference final. Do you think that Wofford could have a chance with, say, a 28-7 and record and victories against North Carolina and Georgia Tech to make the NCAAs as an at-large team? Uh, I think it would be really tough. Um, okay. I mean, obviously the path there, you, you, as you said, you have to win the regular season title. They might uh, get some mild consideration if they were to go undefeated in the regular season uh, in conference play, and uh, you know, they still have a non-conference game against Harvard, which... Uh, they'd have to win as well. So if they won all of those games and then lost in the conference tournament finals, they might get some consideration. I mean, the, the problem, Marky, is that they have, uh, they already have some bad losses on the, the resume. You know, they lost to UNC Asheville. They lost to a Cal team that, uh, you know, obviously is in the Pac-12, but don't let that fool you about how good they are. They're, uh, they're pretty woeful this year. Both those teams will end up with losing records. And they also lost South Carolina, who, not a bad loss, but they're probably not going to be in the tournament. So they're just kind of hanging their hat on that singular uh, win over North Carolina, as great as it was, um, but uh, it's, uh, you know, it's one of those things that need a little bit more on their resume, I think, to get the committee's attention, so uh, I think they'd almost have to run the table the rest of the season to, to get into that discussion. Okay, we're talking to Ken Pomeroy, who knows basketball, and I, at this time of year, I'm always on KenPom.com. Uh, one of the things about the Southern Conference, last year it was ranked 15th in RPI. Uh, what I'm seeing in real-time RPI now is it's down to 19th. But yet Wofford has two victories against an ACC team. Uh, ETSU beat Northern Kentucky, which went to the NCAAs last year. Uh, there have been some nice games that the Southern Conference has played against the big boys this year. Why is the SoCon falling in the RPI this year as compared to last year? Yeah, that's a good point. The top of the conference is uh, pretty strong. I mean, Mercer's a, a pretty impressive team as well. You know, they just fell a little bit short against Alabama the other night. Um, so the, the top of the conference is, is really, really nice. Um, but the bottom of the conference is, is not very good. You know, the VMI and, and the Citadel and West Carolina and Stanford, you know, they're kind of dragging down uh, the conference's RPI. So I think that's playing a role uh, as well. Uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, the conference, I think, overall is pretty healthy. Like, the top of the conference is good, and that's when you're focused on kind of conference strength or, or, or what you think of a conference, like, it's definitely more important to have that kind of structure where the top of the conference is good and the bottom of the conference is not so good than to have them all kind of smushed in the middle and, and you know, have nobody really stand out. So, so yeah, but it's kind of an interesting issue. The, the trend on the SOCOM this year, uh, even though they've had high-profile games, is maybe not all that much different than it was last year. Well, we're talking to Ken Pomeroy of KenPom.com. Tonight, Freedom Hall 
Georgia Southern, old Southern Conference rival, comes in to play East Tennessee State. Uh, of course, Georgia Southern now 9-3 and three out of the Sun Belt Conference. Uh, and the Sun Belt, you know, I remember the 80s, the Sun Belt uh, with Jacksonville and VCU and uh, uh, Virginia Commonwealth Rams being the number two seed in the NCAA tournament. I mean, made the Final Four just a few years ago. But, uh, you know, I mean, I remember it being a real good basketball conference. And uh, it's fallen off a little bit here now. I, I guess, what do you think is the stronger conference for basketball, the Sun Belt or the SOCON? Which one do you think is more prestigious? Ken Pomeroy, I can remember Georgia Southern upsetting ETSU, which was the regular season Southern Conference champ. We thought the glory days were back. They would be in a couple of years, but yeah, that was a very, that's one of the worst losses in ETSU history, I think. And it, uh, you know, ended their season right there. I mean, you were all excited for the SOCON tournament. Boom, Georgia Southern comes in, beats the Bucks. All of a sudden, a 13-3 and conference record gets them nowhere. Uh, I wanted to also, though, ask you a little bit. Uh, when you're looking at the, uh, the, the NCAA tournament and getting multiple bids, last year I believe there were nine conferences that earned multiple bids. Uh, that's down from earlier in the decade, 13. Why are fewer conferences producing multiple bids? Well, I think part of it is related to what we saw this off season, where you have uh, a team like Wichita State, who uh, you know is clearly uh, the class of their league in the Missouri Valley, and they get gobbled up by the American Athletic Conference, and, and you know that's already a multi-bid conference, and uh, so that's, that's one less conference that's, that's going to mm -hmm. be getting uh, potentially not a large bid in terms of the Missouri Valley. Obviously, Wichita State pretty much winning conference tournaments there regularly, so they didn't need to rely on the uh, at large bid every single season, but there were, you know, a few seasons in there where they did. So, um, so that's one factor. Uh, you know, all these conferences are getting bigger. I mean, the Pac-12 absorbed, uh, you know, Utah and BYU from the Mountain West. I mean, those were at large teams in that conference that were no longer. So that was the Mountain West. It's kind of more regularly a one bid league, although that might change this year. But uh, I think it's, you know, you can just look at, at conference inflation generally, uh, in terms of the membership. And, uh, I think that plays a role. I mean, I guess there's maybe another question as to why you know, conferences further down the list are, are not getting at large bids. And I don't know what the trend is on that exactly, but uh, I mean, clearly you can expect probably the top seven or eight conferences to get, you know, all but two or three of the at large bids uh, year in, year out. And I don't see that trend really changing in the near future. Well, we're talking to Ken Pomeroy. We've got a minute left, so I just want to uh, ask you right now, uh, real quick, if you had to make a pick on the national champion in college basketball, who would you take? down to Michigan State or Duke, it feels like we're just, uh, we're just playing out the season to see, uh, you know, which one of those teams is a top overall seed and which one is the second overall seed. I, you know, I still have a few questions about Duke's defense, because that seems to be a perennial issue, so uh, if you had to pin me down, Mark, yeah, I'd go with Michigan State as the national champ. So you have Michigan State at the early going, but subject to change. Well, Michigan State just appeared in Johnson City a couple of times against ETSU. They've always had uh, that uh, ability to play whoever, so uh, let's see that. Anyway, uh, it's Ken Pomeroy. Check him out, KenPom.com. Really, there is no better site to learn just the nitty-gritty where everybody is ranked 1 through 351. And everybody in college basketball knows Ken Pomeroy. We'll be talking to him, hopefully, in the future as well. Tri-City Sports Now, next hour underway. Yeah, I love your stuff. I, I really do.